I have covered so many scams on my channel for well over a decade now, and I'm not pulling your leg or exaggerating when I tell you that the one I'm about to go over I find to be the most ridiculous yet. Not in terms of how intricate or in-depth the scam is, it's not some galaxy brain supervillain scheme, it's your standard, classic, pump and dump, cryptocurrency hogwash. However, it was run by an online pastor and his wife, and they brought in over $3 million and personally pocketed over a $1 million into their own little piggy bank. And basically, they led their followers to believe that God would make them extremely wealthy if they put their money into index coin, which was their cryptocurrency. I've mentioned this before, but I used to be extraordinarily religious. I actually got baptized twice because I was concerned the Lord might have missed my first baptism. You know, maybe he slept in and didn't get to see it, so I wanted to make sure to do it again just in case. I feel like I can say on good authority that this is just downright blasphemous. That is usually something attributed to the work of the devil, where you sell your soul to the devil in exchange for wealth. That's not something God would ever really say, like, hey, put money into crypto and I'll make sure that it 10x's to the moon. It's, it's a good one, trust me. So the pastor and his wife are facing fraud charges for this, and he released a nine minute response video. And I don't know how he was able to record that whole video without getting smited, because the shit he says in there is just diabolical. I'm not kidding. He says God told him to do this. He says that God was the puppet master behind all of it, instructed him to do this. Basically, he's just blaming the big man upstairs for this whole hoopla, fundamentally saying that the Lord forced him to scam Christians, <laughs> like when you really boil it down. And that's only the tip of the iceberg. Mudahar just made a video going more in depth on the particulars of the scam itself. So if you want more information on exactly what happened in that regard, check out some Ordinary Gamers video on it. I'm here to focus on the absurdity of it and the response video that he released because hooey, it is wacky. Someone by the name of Molly White gave us all a blessing of a nice, concise supercut that breaks down the 9 minute video into just the most important moments that he talks about. So that's what we're going to be watching as opposed to the whole thing. Caitlin and I are being charged in a civil charge uh, from the Colorado Securities and Exchange Commission for basically selling millions of dollars worth of cryptocurrency that is deemed worthless by the state. And by everyone else in the world with eyes. So. He's trying to cushion it a little bit, like it's a civil lawsuit for all of this, and it's deemed worthless by the state, but it is worthless, completely, by every possible definition ever. It is worthless. This was, from the get-go it seems, designed to just make them a lot of money and fuck a lot of the followers in the ass. So there's a lot of people that lost a lot of money on this. And now they're looking at some repercussions, and this is his attempt to try and spin himself as kind of the victim here. Now, the reason that they're seeing that it's worthless is because there is no exit for people who have bought. Do you know what we call that? A scam. Basically, people who bought in can't exit. Their money is now stuck there. But you know who could exit? The pastor and his wife. Oh, and they did. They made off like bandits with over $1.3 million dollars. We launched an exchange, the exchange technology failed, things went downhill, and from that point forward, we've just been, we've just been waiting on the Lord literally for a miracle. So the charges are that Caitlin and I have pocketed $1.3 million, and I just want to come out and say that those uh, charges are true. So there's been $1.3 million that's been taken out of, I think it was a total of $3.4 million. But out of that 1.3, half a million dollars went to the IRS and a few hundred thousand dollars went to a home remodel that the Lord told us to do. Yes, you heard that correctly. Go ahead and rewind it if you're still in disbelief. He said that a few hundred thousand dollars went to a home remodel that the Lord told them to do. What an insightful conversation that must have been with God. I had no idea God was so into interior design. Uh, like, not many people get that, that privilege of being able to speak to him directly. I love to imagine that. Pastor Eli just hanging out one day and God gets him on the horn, rings him up, and he's like, Hey, Eli, buddy, listen, your house is atrocious. Am I a joke to you? You worship me in a place that looks like this? It's embarrassing. It's revolting. Listen here. Allocate a few hundred thousand dollars. Upgrade this bitch ASAP. So that way you can start worshiping in style because this is this is not what Christianity is about. You're you're living in a goddamn crack shack and we've got to fix that ASAP, okay? All right. This is the Almighty signing out. Amen. 
Saddest part is, this strategy actually works. This is an extremely effective tactic used by a lot of really corrupt evil pastors, most notably Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland has private jets, and when asked about it, he defends it by saying that God wants him to. He, there's also another pastor, I forgot his name, but he's a friend of Kenneth Copeland's. The two of them are like these demonic leeches that feed off of each other's wealth, and they both have private jets and basically said that God needs them in a private jet because it brings them closer to him and if I remember correctly, they were even quoted saying that they can't be caught in a tube with demons. So they need the privacy of the jet to be more spiritually attuned with God. That's how they justify this luxurious lifestyle they live. Which of course runs counter to the actual lessons of Christianity. But for some reason, they keep getting away with it. Even in this case, Pastor Eli is receiving a lot of support from the people that he is directly scammed and openly admitting to scamming. So how this whole thing started is the Lord told us uh, in 21 to walk away from our marketing company. And he said, I'm going to do a new thing. And then he took us into this cryptocurrency. It was a different cr cryptocurrency other than index coin at the time. Well, that cryptocurrency turned out to be a scam. Oh my goodness. He's portraying the Lord as like a reckless investor here, a crypto bro. How many NFTs does God have, you think? How many bored apes does he own? Also, Pastor Eli and God must be like this. They must be tight because they are constantly talking. So much so that the Lord tries to pitch them on cryptocurrency. Like, hey, bud, brother, take a peek at this thing. Have you ever heard of cryptocurrency? It uses this, uh, this holy technology called the blockchain. We, we should check this out. You, sh you should look into this a little bit, Eli. And then, like, the first coin that God leads him down the path of is a scam. <laughs> he even just openly says it right there. So, like, the first coin, you know, right after going down the spiritual journey with God, it was a scam. <laughs> How anyone can hear this senseless drivel, this gobbledygook from Pastor Eli and actually take it seriously and believe it is beyond me. But let's play ball with it for a second. God is the creator and he's omniscient. And yet somehow he fell victim to a cryptocurrency scam <laughs> in his infinite wisdom and knowledge. Even he was bested by the cryptocurrency menace. <laughs> what hope do we have? I can only imagine the white paper on that first cryptocurrency that Eli and God went halvesies on there. That must have been the most convincing thing ever. If it was enough to convince the Lord <laughs> that it was real. And so the Lord says, give that to them, but also give them a 10x. And I'm like, well, where's this liquidity going to come from? And the Lord says, trust me. Well, as money is coming in, uh, we would be sowing it. And at first it was hundreds of dollars and thousands of dollars, then tens of thousands of dollars. What is God cooking here? It's like a multi-level marketing scheme. He's about to start running a Ponzi scheme or something here. What? <laughs> what? He actually hit Pastor Eli with the trust me bro there on where the liquidity comes from? Interesting. Maybe Pastor Eli is innocent, after all. It's so... Obviously dropping the sarcasm here for a second. It is crazy to me that someone like Pastor Eli Regalado, or however you say his last name, is actually trying this right now, and that it's actually working. That's the saddest fucking part. Let me... I, I'm gonna skip ahead real quick here. I was going to save these screenshots till after I finish the response, but it just feels natural to put them in right now. Here's some of the responses that he's received from people in the community. What a crazy ride, Eli. I can't imagine what you guys are going through. Prayers going up. What about the crazy ride that all of the victims are going through with over $3 million stolen from them in this scam? Why are your prayers going to Eli, who made off with over $1 million here? Those prayers aren't even falling on deaf ears. Pastor Eli actively uses prayers as toilet paper to wipe his ass with. This guy took the prayers of hundreds of people that were praying for a miracle, a financial miracle, and completely trashed them. Someone said, standing with you, and then someone else said, unending support. Why? Why are you standing with him? He is openly admitting to a scam. Why are you supporting him endlessly? He is openly admitting to a scam. He doesn't even have the courtesy to take responsibility for his own actions here. He is blaming God. Which is like the worst thing you can do in Christianity. To blame God for the evils you have committed. So sorry for stress you passed through. God has the plan for you and your team. He will lead you through to the success of this project. And Eli just says, yes. 
The project is dead. Much like the bank accounts for many of the vulnerable people that Eli exploited here. What do you mean you're sorry for his stress? What about the stress of the actual victims? Someone else says, stay in the boat, trust in the Lord, and stop looking at the storm. Amen, Sean. What do you mean stay in the boat? The boat has capsized. There was no boat. It was a fucking yacht that Eli was buying with the money that he scammed from you and people like you. What do you mean? This is not God's plan. Thanks for the update. No one can close a door the Lord has opened. This is not a door the Lord has opened. This is a door Eli kicked open into fraudulent activity, taking advantage of a ton of people that were vulnerable. And Eli says, Isaiah 22, 22, brother, thanks for standing and encouraging us through all of it. Of course, everybody is familiar with Isaiah 22, 22. It's one of the most famous sermons. It's the excerpt that states, buy low, sell high. These are just a few examples of people still supporting him. It's just this perception that pastors are infallible and that if you don't support a pastor that might be sinful on you, it's not. This guy is openly admitting to his scam that he and his wife ran. And he is blaming God for it. That is as sinful as it gets. It is ridiculous to try and paint him as a victim or something like that. It's so unreal. Money would come in, we'd tithe, we sow, more money would come in. And so we were just always under the impression that God was going to provide, that the source was never ending, that God was doing a new thing, and that we had nothing to worry about. And we sold a cryptocurrency with no clear exit. We did. We took God at his word and sold a cryptocurrency with no clear exit. And so the prosecutors have to take that and say, these people willingly sold a cryptocurrency with no clear exit. What we're praying for and what we're believing for still is that God is going to do a miracle. God is going to work a miracle in the financial sector. I'm going to go ahead and spoil how this anime ends. There's not going to be a miracle in the financial sector. This is a bunch of baloney. He and his wife are scammers, and they have used Christianity and God's name in vain here in order to pocket an outrageous amount of wealth for themselves. I feel bad for the victims here because I have no doubt that they're on the older side of things, at least judging by some of the comments I've read, so probably had no clue what cryptocurrency was and just trusted the pastor at his word that God was helping and steering this in the right direction. It would help improve their financial security. I imagine a lot of them were probably desperate, especially given the current climate of things right now. There's a lot of people struggling. So hearing something like this from someone you trust, a pastor who's saying like, put money in here and the Lord will provide and help you out when you need it most. A lot of people would likely buy into that and they clearly did. And now they're fucking ruined for it. And meanwhile, this guy has and his wife have made over a million dollars from it and are still trying to spin this as though they're not evil when they are. This is a terrible, horrible thing to do, made even worse by the fact that he won't just own up to it and instead continues to blame God for it, and then still tries to sow in that like little bit of hope that, hey, maybe there'll be a miracle because God's on our side and helping us out. When that's not going to be the case, this was from the very get-go, it appears, a scam. So yeah, a, a pretty ridiculous situation here that I just had to talk about a little bit. It is foul. That's about it. See ya.